All right, let's take a look at option A for the IV biology syllabus. We're looking at components of the human diet. We're going to go through this stuff pretty, pretty quickly and uh, try to cover as much ground and as little time as possible, but without missing any important details. So let's start with uh, components of the human diet. We got to start with nutrients. Nutrients are things that we have to take in. They're chemical substances that are found in food that are used in the human body, and many of these things um, are things that we can actually make ourselves, but if we can't make them ourselves, then we call them essential. Essential nutrients are things that cannot be synthesized by the body. And uh, if you remember this structure as an amino acid here, NCC, where this R group can be one of 20 different things, so there are 20 amino acids that we need to stay alive. About half of them are non-essential, and half of them are essential. Half of them are non-essential. The non-essential ones are because we can actually make them inside our body using the other nutrients. The ones that are essential are the ones that we actually have to take in as specific nutrients in our food. So we have to make sure uh, we don't have a shortage of these. So various types of essential nutrients are some amino acids, well half of them we talked about, some fatty acids, some minerals, vitamins, and water. And we have to eat in order to get all of this stuff and we have to drink as well too. Carbohydrates, you may have noticed, are not in this list of essential things. Um, it just depends on the way that it's being defined, but carbon, carbohydrates are not included because, one, they're used in respiration, and then, two, lipids can actually be converted uh, for use in, re in respiration as well, too. So we can get some energy and stay alive from just eating fats, but that's going to bring up some other issues that we'll see down here. Okay, So make sure you love water. What happens if you don't get enough proteins? If you don't get enough proteins, you might have seen some pictures of people in less fortunate parts of the world where uh, some of the young kids have a very swelled up uh, abdomen right here, which is called edema. Edema could be swelling of any particular tissues, but uh, abdominal, abdominal, sorry, abdominal swelling is particularly um, common when you are getting a lack of proteins. So if you're getting a lack of proteins, then that means you're not getting some of those essential amino acids that we're talking about. And that can cause a few things. If you don't have enough proteins and amino acids, and that's going to reduce the number of proteins, uh, the different types of proteins that your body may make, hormones, um, various types of enzymes, you're going to be lacking some things. And the lack of those blood proteins uh, will result in your tissues kind of retaining extra fluid. You don't have to understand the details behind that. And that extra fit tissue fluid that gets retained can cause uh, the swelling. So that's one of the most obvious physical signs. And adults who are going through this, we talked, this this was for kids, adults who are going through this protein deficiency um, may undergo serious weight loss, which is called wasting. And if you're a kid growing up with protein deficiency, that's going to mess with your development. So it could you could end up with uh, mental and physical impairments, basically. Um, so that's one thing. Let's look at another thing that could happen. This, unfortunately, PKU as a genetic disease is not really the result of not getting enough particular types of food. In fact, uh, if you have this disease and one of the things they tell you to do is to avoid certain types of food, this disease, PKU or phenylketonuria, is actually caused by a gene mutation. Here's a, a kid with a typical case of PKU. It's a disease that only affects those who have two copies of the trait. It's uh, only for those who are homozygous recessive. So if you look at a simple diagram like this, if you've done genetics already, you should understand that if both parents are carriers, um, then there's a one, one quarter chance, one fourth chance of actually getting this particular disease. So what happens is this gene actually codes for an enzyme that converts one amino acid into another amino acid, phenylalanine into tyrosine. So under a normally functioning uh, human being, phenylalanine will get broken down more often and then you'll end up getting tyrosine. So if you're, if you're un unable to make this particular enzyme, then you can imagine two things. One, um, phenylalanine may build up in your, in your blood system and you might not get enough tyrosine. So uh, things with people who have PK, you, you have to do whatever you can to keep phenylalanine controlled, keep it down. So you need to re reduce the intake of foods that are high in phenylalanine. And then you might also need to take some tyrosine supplements because you're going to be low on that as well too. So it turns out meat, fish, nuts, cheese, and peas, these types of foods over here, you can see a, a larger picture. These are foods that you have to keep under control if you are suffering from PKU. All right. 
Uh, if you don't keep it under control, then that can cause all kinds of things during development, reduced growth of head in the brain, various forms of retardation, and then a lack of hair and skin pigmentation as well too. So this is something in the diet that has to be controlled if you're suffering from this. This is just one of many different types of um, digestive diseases that are out there, but that's something to keep in mind. A uh, quick visit over here to minerals and vitamins. We're going to see this in more detail later, but just to understand the main difference between these, here's some vitamin C that I hope you're taking a lot of. And uh, here is an example of, this is calcium. That's a calcium atom over here. This is a calcium ion. Basically, you need to know that minerals are elements in ionic form, like calcium ions, Ca2+, whereas vitamins are much more complex organic compounds. So if you're looking at a... a molecular structure of something like that well calcium ions are just going to be ca2 plus combined with the very various other uh, inorganic molecules relatively simple whereas vitamin c <clears throat> ascorbic acid is going to be a pretty large complex uh, molecule we're going to see that vitamin c in a little more detail later so let's go over and take a look at fatty acids now which are uh, an important part of the human diet but they get a lot of uh, complaints. And so what we need to do is we need to separate out and try to understand the differences in the types of fatty acids. So here's what I need to remember here. Um, when you look at acids, when you look at acids, uh, minus hydrochloric acid, most acids, organic acids, ethanoic acid, um, butanoic acid, all these important fatty acids we're going to be talking about, they all have a C double bond O and OH at the end, and that tells you immediately that it's an acid. And same thing up here, amino acid also has the C to double bond O, and then an OH attached right there. So in short, it's COOH. So this is kind of dumb, but I like to remember whenever I see a COOH, that that's cool, because acids are cool, and so it reminds me that it's an actual acid, and I'll enlarge this picture in a second. So of all the different types of fatty acids, which are basically, if you can see over here, chains of carbons with a coup at the end, and then some variations inside, you can kind of sort these in, in several different ways. So there's saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids. There's cis and tran unsaturated fatty acids. And then there's monounsaturated versus polyunsaturated. And you hear about this in the news quite a lot, but we need to understand a little bit chemically what we're talking about. And this is, it's not, it's pretty easy actually. So. A saturated fatty acid is one that looks like this over here. There's no double bonds. Every carbon is bond is bound to uh, it's it's got a full set of uh, bonds attached to it. There's no double bonds existing in this chain here, so that's saturated. If it's unsaturated, then there exists some double bonds in the unsaturated fatty acid. So therefore, this one's saturated, this one's unsaturated, this one's unsaturated. For those that are unsaturated, you can have you can separate them into cis and tran. Now, cis and tran, this is what it, what it means. If it's a cis fatty acid, that means the hydrogens are on the same side. Okay, cis means same size, same side. If it's trans, then the H's are spread out. Now, this is actually a three-dimensional structure, but H's are spread out, so they're um, further away from each other than in the cis configuration. And these have consequences for health as well too. Here's a little yellow box talking about that. Most of the natural fats that exist are actually cis. Okay, these are all cis. Trans are artificial ones that we that we use in food processing actually. So uh, that has some consequences as well too. And finally, really quickly before we go into the health consequences are the difference between monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. And this is even easier to understand. Because unsaturated, right? We're talking about ones with uh, double bonds. Monounsaturated just means the whole molecule has only one double bond in it. Polyunsaturated means it can have multiple, multiple double bonds in it. So if you take a look at this diagram over here, uh, you, here are the names for these. You don't have to know all the names for them, but you can see how they're classified here as cis or um, monounsaturated. There's only one double bond in this molecule. This is polyunsaturated. This also has some health consequences. So let's see, what are some famous ones? You might have heard of people taking these omega-3 fish oil fatty acid kind of supplements, omega-3 fatty acid supplements. Um, what does the omega, what does the three mean? The three basically just means, I don't know if this is going to come up, but just so you know where they get the three from. The three means from the opposite end of where the ku is, where the ku part of the acid is, the COOH, 
if you count the third carbon, one, two, three, it just means the double bond exists between the third and the fourth carbon. So in this case right here, uh, opposite end of the ku, one, two, three, and four, there's a double bond between three and four, so this is considered an omega-3 fatty acid, okay? Omega-3 fatty acid. That's all it is. And then really quickly, let's look at some of the health consequences here. Now, it's important to keep in mind, a lot of this is circumstantial. So very important to understand the difference between correlation and causation. Everything you see in the news is not necessarily true. They've, we found that uh, saturated fats could be linked to coronary heart disease, but it could just be from low fiber intake. So we're not really sure. Uh, the s olive oils are high in cis fats. And they seem to link to places that eat a lot of olive oil, and those people tend to have lower lower chances of getting coronary heart disease. But again, it could be genetic factors or the fact that they eat a lot of tomatoes as well too. So far, the strongest evidence seems to show that trans fats, which are artificially produced, have the strongest link to coronary heart disease. People that die, and we open them up and take a look, we tend to find um, if they actually died of coronary heart disease, there seems to be a lot of trans fats that are hanging out in there as well too. So omega-3, people take these pills, but there is very little evidence that directly shows that taking this necessarily, taking this stuff necessarily uh, improves your eyes or brain development, okay? Um, yeah, that's it. And there are a lot of people, like the Maasai, who maybe there could be a genetic link or diet link, we're going to revisit this later, that have a relatively low rate of heart disease compared to other people. All right, so that's a few of the components of the human diet. We may add a few in a little bit.